If you wish to be happy, study happiness. And that is the quote of the day. Welcome back to the Quote of the Day show. I'm your host, Sean Croxton of SeanCroxton.com. Today, we've got Jim Rohn back on the show. I've been listening to a lot of Jim Rohn lately, and he's talking about happiness, something that all of us want to have. But, you know, for the vast majority of the time, in order to be something or to do something or to have something, we need to study it. And then when we study it, we just can't study. We got to put our studies into practice. And as Jim says, we got to turn it into an art form. We become happy by design. We create our lives by design. Here's Jim. Here was the second phrase. Mr. Shove said, Mr. Own, if you wish to be happy, study happiness. I didn't know happiness was a study. My best hope for happiness at age 25 was to just go through the day with my fingers crossed. Open somehow, something would make me happy. Shove said, no, Mr. Rohn, happiness is not something you postpone. Happiness is not something off in the future. Happiness is something you design. you got to get the word. Happiness is something you design. Happiness is a study. Happiness is a practice. Happiness is an art. It's not an accident. It's an art. And anybody that wants to can study, practice the art of happy living. Happiness is like culture. Money doesn't make you cultured, but culture is within the grasp of all of us. How much is a book on sophistication in the marketplace? $4,000? No, $40. I'm telling you, in America, everything's available. Everything's within reach. All you have to be is committed to it and make it a study. Culture is a study. Sophistication is a study. It's not an amount. It's not an account. It's a study. Money doesn't make you sophisticated and cultured. I know a guy that's rich. He's a clod. <laughs> the guy's a clod. Eats with his elbow in his soup. I mean, he's just a clod. Nothing much more pitiful than a rich clod. I mean, you know, it's a sad thing to see. Money doesn't make you sophisticated. Only study and practice makes you sophisticated. Only study and practice makes you cultured. And only study and practice makes you happy. Study and practice makes you rich key phrase. Don't be lazy in learning. One, how to do well. Next, how to live well. Don't be lazy in learning and practicing the art of economics, practicing the art of productivity, and practicing the art of lifestyle. Shove taught me in such simple terms. Shove said, Mr. Owen, if you're getting your shoes shined, shoe shine boy has done an exceptional job. You look down, you got one of the world's all-time great shine. And you pay him. Now, you got a little change in your hand. Question pops in your mind. Should I give him one quarter or two quarters as a tip from a neat shine? Here's what Shelf said. If two amounts pop in your mind, always go for the higher amount and become the higher thinking person. That helped change my life. Here's what he said. Become a two-quarter person. Now, you can tell that was a long time ago when a quarter was a good tip. Now it takes dollars. But just substitute 1992 dollars for quarters. Shove said, hey, if you, you know, are thinking one quarter or two quarters, and you say, well, no, I'll just give him one quarter. He said, that'll affect you the rest of the day. The rest of the day, you'll look down, see this great shine. You'll say, I've got to be really cheap. One lousy quarter, tip from a shine. But he said, if you'll go for the two quarters, Shove said, you can't believe the extra happiness you can buy for just an extra quarter. That's called studying and practicing the art of lifestyle, which means living well. Money doesn't make you happy. Father wads up a $20 bill, throws it at his son, and says, if you need the darn stuff that bad, take it, just get out of my face. How sad, a father with money and no joy. He studied economics, but he never studied joy. I'm asking you to turn that around. Turn that all around. I did a seminar one time, St. Louis, Missouri. 
When I finished a seminar like this, a man walked up and said, Mr. Owen, you've really gotten to me. He said, I'm going to change my philosophy. I'm going to change my attitude. I'm going to change my life. I'm going to change everything. He said, you've touched me today. And he said, you'll hear about me. You'll hear my story someday. I said, okay. Right? A lot of people right, say things. Sure enough, a few months later, I come back to St. Louis, did another seminar. When I finished my seminar, I saw this man come walking up. I didn't remember his name, but he said... I'm sure you'll remember me as the man who said, I'm going to go make some changes. You've touched me today. I said, I do remember you. He said, I'm telling you, things are already happening for me. I cannot believe in just a matter of months. He said, one of the things I decided to change was my relationship with my family. He said, my wife and I have two lovely teenage daughters. Parents couldn't ask for any more beautiful, lovely daughters. And he said, uh, I'm the only one that's given him trouble. He said, these daughters of ours have never given us any trouble. He said, I've usually been the one all these years, given all the trouble and all the static. He said, my daughters love to go to the rock concerts, and I'm always giving them trouble. They have to beg me for the money. He said, I don't want you to go. You stay out too late. The music's too loud. You're going to ruin your hearing. You won't be able to hear the rest of your life. And he said, I just get on their case. And he said, they keep begging, keep begging. Finally, when they beg long enough, I say, all right, here's the money. If you have to go that bad, just go. He said, that's how I've been up until now. But he said, after I left your seminar, I decided to change all that called lifestyle, living well. He said, you won't believe it. Not long ago, I picked up the newspaper and I saw an advertisement and I knew my two daughters, it was one of their favorite performers was coming to town. He said, guess what I did? He said, I went down and bought the tickets myself and brought them home, put them in an envelope. And when I saw my daughters later that day, he said, I handed them this envelope and I said to my two lovely daughters, you may not believe it, but inside this envelope are two tickets for the upcoming concert. They could not believe. And he also added, you'll be happy to know Begging days are over. <laughs> now they cannot. He said, now don't open the envelope till you get to the concert. They said, okay. So they go to the concert, come concert time, open up the envelope, hand the tickets to the usher. He says, follow me. And he starts down front. The girls say, hey, hold it, hold it. Something must be wrong. He takes another look, says, no, nothing's wrong. Follow me. Tenth row, center. Now they cannot leave. <laughs> Tenth row, center. The only tickets they were able, able you know, ever to beg for was, right, third balcony, can't see. He said, I stayed up a little late that night. Sure enough, a little after midnight, my two daughters come bursting through the front door. One of them lands in my lap. The other one's got her arms around my neck. They're both saying, you got to be one of the all-time world's great fathers. He said, Mr. Owen, you're right. I can't believe. Same money, different father. He said, I've started making the changes and I decided to start with my teenagers, my girls. He said, what a difference it's making in my life. And I'm telling you, you can do that with your lifestyle. You can do it with your sales career. You can do it with your management career. You can do it with any part of your life. If you're looking for equities unmatched, do not curse the only thing you have. Don't complain about the only thing you have, which is seed and soil, sunshine, rain, miracle and seasons. But start changing and processing and evaluating things like recovering today. And this process of change will take off for you.